Hi guys, so we did a short on our Associate B6 on some of the upgrades we did. And you guys, a couple of you seem quite desperate for us to do the full video on what we've done to this awesome, absolutely awesome RC car. So, watch this video and we'll show you what we've done. We've also got at the end of the video, a couple of new bits. <laughs> So guys, here is our car. It is fresh off. Recently we did the Essex Carpet Clash. We're in the UK here. Had quite a good run there. Extremely competitive meeting that was. And just to clarify, we are not supported by any of these manufacturers, um, associated or anyone like that. Anyone we talk about, we're not supported. It's all our own opinions. So the first thing we come on to, so the first thing we come on to is the chassis. We changed the chassis. Now a lot of people, a lot of team drivers, they use the shorter chassis. This is the standard carpet chassis. On here is the dirt chassis. It's five mil shorter. It's round about here, the five mil. It moves the rear of the chassis, sorry, the rear of the car further forward. It makes it more agile. And pretty much that's what all the team drivers are using. So that's what we've done. So this chassis, we're not really going to use. As you see, we've got the chassis skin on it. This is a proper associated one. There's loads of people do various versions of it. And it actually gives you a couple of these parts. But one thing I don't like about the chassis skin is some of them come with the hole cutouts, but these ones don't. So if you need to undo anything, you've either got to take the chassis skin off or cut holes in it, um, which you can see here on the servo mounts, I've already done that, which I didn't like. And all I've done here because we change these blocks here quite regularly, which we'll come on to in a minute. But I just peeled that off. As you can see, we run the car. It was in, on carpet. We've been running this recently, so it's running quite low, and we've got a few marks there where it does hit the ground. But that's the chassis. The big, one of the biggest changes, anyway. As we said, we love this kit. We love this kit. We love the associated kit. But one of the things I don't like on it is these. You know what that is? It's a piston, shock piston. Now, the standard kit, can't remember exactly off the top of my head what they come with, but it comes with two holes front and back. Now, because these shocks, they're actually 13 mil diameter, so they're a slightly different, they're a slightly larger diameter than the older associated. And if you build this up, if you build this up with the kit oil settings, or the kit oil and the kit pistons, the kit pistons, which are only two holes, I don't know if you can see that, it's actually three hole. We've built up two hole, the suspension just feels awful. It just does not work anywhere. So what we've done, we have got some aftermarket pistons, three holes, and we have drilled them. 1.7 and 1.8 mil holes in there. Um, you can get proper drill bit piston, drill bit thingies. Basically, you just need to make sure you've got the right size drill bit. Um, so we've drilled them out, and then the car is superb. You can feel that. Well, you can't feel it on camera. Of course you can't. But that feels so nice and supple. So that is a big thing. If you've got one of these cars, be prepared to play about with that setting. Kit setting, I don't think it'll work anywhere. don't think it's any good at all. Now, the only thing we've done modified on the actual shocks, which is what I was advised to do, is in here you've got obviously the um, O-rings, which are really good. They build up really nicely, the shocks do. But there's some machined internal um, washers. And they're not particularly expensive. But I was told to put them in there and I've not had any leakage. I don't know if you can see on camera, there's been no leakage from these shocks. We've done several meetings on them. Okay, yes, we know you rebuild the shocks regularly or change the oil, but there's been no leakage for them whatsoever. We do have one thing on this car that does leak a bit, which we'll come on to in a minute. I'm not sure what's going on with that. But anyway, shocks are good. Change the pistons. And if you've got a few extra quid, then change the um, internals in there. Now, we all like shiny silver alloy blue things. Well, obviously, Associated's colour is blue. Can you see some blue bits on here? Well, they're actually a different colour, aren't they? They're slightly... That's a different blue to that. Well, we upgraded the steering arms. Can you see them in there? We've got the blue alloy steering arm and the alloy steering rack. Because uh, the nice thing with this rack is you can adjust the height of it with that bush there, so you can adjust your bump steer when you adjust your... your um, kick up at the front and your caster we put that on because it just sharpens up the steering response when we're running these on carpet you've got so much grip there's so much grip that we run them on you just need such quick steering response and we decided to upgrade that the standard one is fine but there is one part on here i would recommend upgrading it and it's alloy but it's not blue 
and that's the servo horn. If you use, is that focused okay? If you use the stock plastic one, it will strip. Guarantee you will hit something and it will strip. Because there's no servo saver on here, if you are steering like that and you hit something, it whips the steering back, it will strip, more than likely, it will strip the teeth off this servo horn. And it, it, I've done it. I've done it on various cars. So always put the alloy servo horn on there. Yes, you are going to put more stress on your servo. And you might strip, the worst case scenario is you may do damage to your servo, but it's unlikely. These servers are so strong and it's just a part of racing, really. But one of the things also to know is when you are setting up this link here, it gives you some settings in the, um, in the manual as to how to put it. But make sure this arm here is parallel to, this, uh, to the actual rack. So space it out there to make sure it's parallel. You don't want it leaning that way or leaning that way. That's the best way to set that up. So, I mean, again, it, it is money. Money you spend on these cars. But if you think the overall money you spend on these cars, it's not a massive amount. They're really they're relatively cheap parts. Um, so we put that on there. And first time, no, did notice the difference. Not essential, but a worthwhile upgrade. So I've took a wheel off for this one. It will come clear in a minute. So for anyone who races off-road buggies or one-tenth, one-eighth, you have these adjustments here on your suspension, the pill inserts. You can put these pills in here to adjust the towing of the car, which is how far that wheel curves in. You can adjust the kick up, which is the angle of this wishbone, how far the front of it kicks up. You can also adjust the track width and also the roll centers a little bit with those as well. Now, as standard, the minimum amount of towing you can get on this is, I think it's one degree. So you can't go less than one degree. When you race these on carpet, we've found you actually want to go to zero to two degrees if you can. So that means that wheel is parallel. Those wheels are parallel. They're not kicking in at all. You can't do that with these standard blocks. So what you have to do, in fact, this is the standard block. I have one of the older ones, the B6.1 block on here. That basically pulls this in a little bit further so you can actually get zero degrees toe in which is a big difference we we're racing this at the weekend at this carpet clash meeting which i've talked about we've done some shorts on it as well so check out our other videos and it just makes the car turn so much better it is just a godsend so it's worthwhile get peace to get and what we have also got guys to store all your setup bits with these cars you've got loads of bits but what we have got oh that's upside down isn't it we have produced one of these. It keeps all your setup pieces in one place. Now, the eagle-eyed of you will notice there is an error on this box, but we are actually amending it. These are all those pill inserts, which I said, which go into the back of the car in here. We have actually got a new version of this, which there's a black set of these, which gives you even more adjustments. So we have got that available as well. We've also got a space here for your spare holder. We've got the front caster inserts, which go into here which adjusts your front caster. Haven't mentioned that, pretty much run it all with standard as 30. You've also got your rear hub insert holders there, which go in here to adjust the height of your hub, just a tuning aid. And also you've got your diff inserts to adjust the heights of your diff. I mean, you guys know, I'm sure you know about how to set your diff height up. And also the eyelets for the bottoms of the shocks, which you can put different ones on there, which gives you different lengths on your shock absorbers so this little kit here it's on ebay um, or leave us a message on facebook we'll leave a link below to our facebook page so you can leave us a message on there and we can do these we can also customize the text on them they're a good little thing we do these for all the different brands of cars and it works really well one of the other things you can also do on this car is you can turn around these rear arms basically you've got two holes there but if you turn it round, you have one hole, which is effectively in the centre, which is what we've done. And you can also, these are just basic setup tips, thought I'd just cover it in this video. You can also turn around these hubs. If you turn them around one way, um, it, it just adjusts the track. It makes it slightly shorter. I've run this car pretty much as short as I can. It's short on there, short on there, just to make it as quick, as responsive as I can. That's what we do. And one little tip what I did find while we're on the old tip side of things. I found the threads in these were pretty shocking. Um, I stripped it actually after about two or three removings of this part. And what I've done, I've actually just put a slightly bigger headed screw in there, tapped it out and done that. That made a big difference. I don't know. I think I might have done a little video on that. I can't remember. If so, I'll leave a link to it. 
Another little tip on here, one of the things we've found is the keep an eye on your pin that's in here. They are very small, unlike um, some of the other brands. That's one of the things I wasn't too keen on. The pin that's in the UJ, the UJ joint, in a universal joint, is quite small. So I wasn't too keen on that. And while we're talking about things we're not too keen on, the diff. Love the diff in this because you can take the gear diff out, put the ball diff in, you haven't got to change anything else, unlike other brands out there, <coughs> X-Ray. Um, but I found the diff leaks, or certainly after about three or four runs, I take the diff to bits and there's not hardly any oil in it. And there's quite a lot of oil in the bottom part and in the top parts of the diff casing. So, guys, leave us a comment. Has anyone else had that problem? I have just bought a new diff, which I'm going to build up and try, see if it's a, a problem with this one. Um, but I don't know if it's just me. But, say, leave us a comment on that. Um, we all like to, always like to hear good and bad comments, both on the video and what you think, tips and hints. We, you know, it's a great RC community we've got. And, you know, just sharing all these little um, tips is a great help. So that's one thing I don't like on it. And one other thing I think on this car which i think looks the worst is this little strap here i know it's for the um transponder to go on but i think that gray plastic is rubbish so i think we will be upgrading that to carbon fiber and i don't like the battery strap on it the wiring in this car i know is not very neat we need to tidy that up but time is against us at the moment we haven't had time to do that but i think we need to put another battery strap on it so again what guys do you recommend for the battery strap do you reckon what parts do you recommend for these so i've given you some hints and tips Leave us some messages or some comments as to what you recommend us to put on there. And also, we've got our fan here. I know you can get a waterfall here. People do a 3D printed waterfall. Of course, what do we do? We do loads of 3D printing. So we will perhaps look to design one of them up. But I quite like the fan there. Um, it's blowing on the M-Bell, which is where I prefer it to be. But we might try an M-Bell fitting on there. We did on our previous um, off-road car, the X-Ray, we did um put one we made one into there because there wasn't as much space around here but that's just the way it is and finally a question for you guys what servos do you run i was running a sanwa which is a top spec sanwa but i found it wasn't quick enough so i've now gone to this ko if you see it's an rsx3 which is pretty quick but I'm still not 100% sure it's quick enough. As again, because we've got so much grip when we race these indoors. It's completely different when you're racing them on a, on a low grip surface, I know. But when we're racing these indoors, which in the winter here in the UK is predominantly what we're doing, I don't know if this is fast enough. You know, we've got all these alloy bits I need to try and sharpen up the steering response. But I'm not sure if that is quick enough or not. But leave us a comment. Right, guys, and finally, you see another car has joined us. Well, this is a 6.3 which we bought. Oh, and the shock's fallen off it, and your minor thing. And what I think we're going to do with this, we're going to build this up into, in the UK, what we tend to call our wet cars, our low-grip car. So we had X-Ray. If you follow some of our previous we had X-Ray brand before this. Again, we're not supported by X-Ray Associate, any of those cut teams. We just do this and fund it all ourselves. But we're really impressed with the X-Ray wet car, which was quite a bit different to the dry car of all the rear end and that. But we've been the dry car. The dry cars have been sold. We have still got a wet car. But I would like to keep with one brand. It makes it easier for spares and everything. But I'm not really sure how to go about setting this up as a wet spec car. Obviously, softer motor and things like that, I know. But from suspension, suspension side of things, hmm, what do you guys recommend? So if you're in the States, obviously, it's your, your dirt spec where you're on low grip on the dirt. So, again, last little bit there. A little bit of... Uh, viewer input should we say leave us some messages and some comments as to what you think we should do to this car what we should check on this car to make it into a dirt spec so i hope you enjoyed those videos if you like these videos on these off-road cars let us know because we do tend to do more of the large scale stuff because that does seem to be popular but certainly when we've done the b6.4 it has done pretty well we've had a nice lot of views on it so you guys seem to like us so leave some comments on what else you'd like us to do and thanks for watching